there is such a great need for men to not only live out the true calling as fathers, husbands, husbands, fathers, brothers, mentors, but there's a greater calling for us as men to bring our boys along, that they may have great models and teaching and instruction and they themselves live out the call of their manhood. Man camp has been outstanding. It goes way beyond my wildest expectations. I expected to come together with a group of guys, we're gonna have a little bit of fun, a little bit of excitement, kind of grow closer to God, you know, and do that how you doing bro thing and man it's just been wonderful guys didn't wait you know a week before they started to really go deep with one another and share good stuff and, and build friendships it's been outstanding it's what happens when you bring men together around the grace of God around his word and in a place like this man it was cool sharing with the guys about legacy and, uh, and, and it was really cool that one of the youngest guys in the, in the group he knew what it meant legacy right anybody know what legacy means what's legacy mean what you leave behind say it again what you leave behind absolutely true what you leave behind what you leave behind scripture says our life is but a vapor a vapor man that's just like psh, gone right and uh you know, I stand here after uh, quite a few decades on earth and uh, I think, man, where did that go? I remember being a young guy at age 20. One particular day, I went with a bunch of buddies. We went to this lake. I caught this massive fish. Well, about, uh, if you're tall, you can have bigger fish. You realize that. You get your arms out farther. <laughs> it was this big northern pike. It was cool. I was kind of the hero of the day. And man, we just messed around and played in the water and all that stuff. And, and that was a day that just is etched in my mind. I was with some of my favorite people and we were just doing fun stuff in the out of doors. Well, that's 41 years ago. I remember it like that, but that was 41 years ago. Guys, it goes fast. It goes fast. And my legacy is not what happened on that day. It's not what will happen on today. It is the sum total of what I did in my life all the days, all right? King Hezekiah, anybody heard of King Hezekiah? Yes. All right, <clears throat> here's kind of a fun question. Was King Hezekiah a good guy or not a good guy? How many believe he was a good guy? Raise your hand, he's a good guy. Let me see your hands. Oh, no, no, I don't mean this little, come on. Raise your hand, let me see it. All right, look around you. King Hezekiah, good guy. The consensus is, Good guy, King Hezekiah. Thank you very much. Let's see. Uh, I'm reading over in 2 Kings 18. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not cease to follow him. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he was successful in whatever he undertook. Leaving a positive legacy might sound difficult, but frankly it's not. It's a matter of having a vision for life. What is it that we want to become? Not just what do we want to do, what do we want to become? It's a lot about character. It's a lot about do we love others? And then making adjustments. And I'll tell you the most common thing that guys do when we work with them on this issue of legacy is they begin to set aside the things that they want so that others around them, especially their family, the next generation, can achieve the things that they want and that they need to in life. So it's just a great place to start. Let's empty out so much of that self and let some other folks in. Hezekiah takes on leadership of a whole nation. Man, this is the national leader. This is the man. And, uh, oh, he's being attacked. He's being threatened. He's being threatened by another nation. And what's his response? He prays. That's interesting to have a national leader that prays. He trusts God. He trusts God. Uh, he says this, he says, Now, O Lord, our God, 
deliver us from his hand, this, this enemy, so that all kingdoms on earth shall know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Wow. And then this guy Isaiah, this prophet, comes along and he goes, um, Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I have heard your prayer. So did God hear Hezekiah's prayer? He did. So this dude, Hezekiah, prays and God hears him. That's pretty cool to know that. He said, I've heard your prayer concerning this other king. Uh, this, is the, this is what the word of the Lord says against him. And he just says, I'm dealing with this for you. And that night, the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. Wow. There's an answer to prayer. Hezekiah goes, yo, God, these guys are coming to kill us. Will you deal with it, please? And God says, I got your back. He sends an angel, wipes out the enemy. How's Hezekiah doing so far on the cool guy scale? Pretty high still? All right, he's doing fine. All right, let's, let's keep looking here. There's no formula. There's no A, B, C, D to leave a positive legacy. So you've got to go from principle. And one of the great principles in scripture is found in the words where we are encouraged to love God with everything we've got and then love our neighbor as ourselves. And I think love is the key. And frankly, that doesn't come from natural man. You've got to be connected to the creator. You've got to go to the cross. Jesus Christ can change a heart that then expands and allows other people in. Let's start there and then watch what happens. Uh-oh, Hezekiah gets sick. Remember we've talked in the past about bushwhacked and blindsided? Mm -hmm. He gets bushwhacked. He gets sick. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. Whoa. Yep. And who shows up? God. That same prophet guy. The prophet Isaiah went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die and you will not recover. Wow. If I see Isaiah coming to my house, I ain't answering the door. I mean, if you're going to bring that kind of message, dude, keep walking. And remember, Hezekiah knows his word is true because he's the guy that said God says he's going to deliver you from the Assyrians. So it's not like some crackpot shows up and goes, hey, dude, I got a word from the Lord for you. No, this is the guy. This is the prophet that you trust. And he said, um, God says, you're dead. You, you, you don't have a choice. You don't have a chance. It's over. And then Isaiah leaves. Wow. Thanks, dude. And Hezekiah, after he hears this, turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. And here's what Hezekiah says. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and done what was good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord says. I've heard your prayer. So again, God is listening to what this man says. I have seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple. I will add 15 years to your life. Wow. Pretty cool answer to prayer. My nation's in trouble. Boom. Delivered from the enemy. I'm sick and dying. Boom. I'll give you another decade and a half. Pretty awesome. This guy's got a pipeline. To the boss. So then, during the same period of time, some envoys come from Babylon. They heard about Hezekiah's illness, and I'm not sure they were coming to bring roses and get well cards. They're checking out what's going on in his kingdom. And he shows them everything. He takes these guys, he shows them the armory, the treasury, everything in the kingdom. He is the king was not to share those secrets with the enemy. But he did. He messed up. He made a mistake. And who shows up again? Isaiah. I was born in Saginaw, Michigan. At a young age, my mother and my father had some disagreements. My brother was already born. He's five years apart from me. Um, 
You know, my dad, the last memories that I have of my dad as a young child was the day that he came over and he beat my mom and I told him not to hit my mom and he threw me across the room. Um, and uh, not that I don't ever want to talk to my dad or ever want to be close to him, um, but it, things didn't get better from there. He beat my mother for seven years. Some of those years which I was with him. And uh, when they finally broke apart, um, the, the things that he did to my family, I still feel the scarring of it. I often, when I'm with my kids, I think of what all the men in my family missed. And, and when I used to grow, when I was growing up, I was so angry with these men. I mean, I, sw I made a vow I would kill my father, you know, um, uh, until God put me in a position to meet him and I had to forgive him, you know. Uh, but, but when I had kids, I began to have compassion for the guy. You know, it was, look at what he missed out on, you know. And, uh, and that gave me more compassion for him more than anything. I began to feel sorry for the guy, you know. And Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, where, where did these men say, where where they come from? Hezekiah says, well, they came from a, a distant land, uh, from Babylon. It's like, dude, the enemy, remember? So Hezekiah let the enemy in. He said, y'all come on in and look around. Because he's probably feeling pretty cocky. I was about to die. God showed up, man, said, I got another 15 years. So go ahead, look around. He did not protect that which was precious, which was under his care. They saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said, there is nothing among my treasures I did not show them. Now it gets really fascinating. Hezekiah says, uh, Isaiah says to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up unto this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Now, now, get what's going on here. This is a guy that was raised up to be the leader of a nation. His nation was threatened. He prayed, God delivered. His health was threatened. He prayed, God delivered. And then for some reason, it's like he dropped the kingly mantle and said, well, let's just kind of be whatever happens, happens. Hey, you guys from this distant land, I know you're our enemies, but just look around. It's no big deal. Everything's cool. Check it out. And remember when he's doing this in that extra 15 years that God gave him. He could have died prior to this moment and been a hero. He would have been recorded as the greatest king that ever, 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 ever lived for all of Israel. But he's in his extra minutes now. Okay? He's in the extended time period. He's in overtime here because he asked for it. So what he's told now by this prophet that's never been wrong, the day's coming when all, everything that your previous generations have worked for, the good name that they've built, the nation that they built, it will be carried away. It will be taken from you. It gets worse. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, listen now, that will be born to you. His extra time, his extra 15 years, he's going to have more children. They will be born to you. This isn't somebody, they're not already here. They're going to come. Will be taken away. They will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. In other words, gentlemen, his sons that will be born to him in this extra time that he's asked for, when he could have just closed it out, man, on the account and looked like a superstar hero, he's going to lose everything that the previous leaders have stored up and worked so hard for. And his sons that will be born will be taken by the enemy into the enemy camp, into the enemy nations, away from their homes, and it gets even worse, they will become eunuchs. Let me be very clear without being graphic. They will lose their masculinity. They will lose their identity as men of God by the hand of the enemy. This is going to happen to you. 
Now remember, when bad stuff has happened in the past, what was Hezekiah's response? He prayed. What was God's response? He answered. Let me show you where what could have been the greatest king in all of Israel fell short by his response. Hezekiah responds, The word of the Lord you have spoken is good. Hezekiah replied, For he thought, Will there not be peace and security in my lifetime? What he said was, I've served the people all my life. I've prayed in crisis and God has responded. But I've reached a place in my life where I'm just a little tired of it. And as long as it's going to be okay with me, yeah, everything that, you know, I'm the builder of the family name, I know that was kind of important, but you know what? I'm just kind of tired. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah the, the sons that are coming, yeah, I know they're going to lose their masculinity. They're going to lose their identity. They won't even know that they're men. They'll be captured by the enemy. But, but uh, man, as long as it's going to be okay with me, as long as my 401k won't run out, as long as I got a roof over my head, as long as there's food for me, it's okay. I ask you again, men, Hezekiah, how many say he was a good king? He had his moments, guys, but in the end, in the end, in those extra 15 years that he asked for, his character changed, his nature changed, he lost his vision, and he forgot about that which was the most important, which was the next generation that could have gone on and carried on his legacy. They could have built his family name. They could have built their nation. And he said, as long as my life's going to be okay, as long as I'm comfortable, no biggie. Guys, the legacy of Hezekiah is not so good. I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I'm not picking on the man, but I know God put it in Scripture for us to learn from. And I don't care if you're 14 or a little bit older than that. We got all ages here. I want you to think about your legacy. It's not built in a day. It's built day by day. It's not by, built by a character flaw that pops up once in a while. It's built by lifelong character. And I'm telling you, it's not how you start this thing. It's how you finish. On one hand, you had Hezekiah who, was, who had everything handed to him. And he, had, I mean, he was ready to, to knock the ball out of the park. And he didn't step up in a time he needed to step up. He didn't finish strong. When he was younger, there was no one like him. He was there ready to do the things God had him for. But at the end, you know, he, his, the angel came and said, everything's bad is going to happen to your family. And that was the end of his legacy. How do you want to be remembered? How do you want to be remembered? And young guys, I'm talking to you too. How do you want to be remembered in this life? How would you be remembered? What would people say about you? If you were written in a book like this, what would be written? Is there anything that you might want to change going forward so that how you want to be remembered aligns with how you would be remembered? This ministry is a total team effort and you can be part of that team. Perhaps you've got a location, a ranch or a retreat center with lots of outdoor activities where we could shoot our next series. Perhaps you could be a sponsor for one episode of the entire series, or you could even be on the show. If you want to help us to produce high quality Christian television, build strong families and great dads, please go to our website. Thank you. There's this little chapel on the property where we are in this ranch property. And man, we went in there and it was just, it was golden. And it's where we wrapped up the discussions about legacy. And it was cool to hear the guys talking about the changes that they want to make so that how they want to be remembered is actually how they will be remembered. Is legacy created in a day? No. Okay. Is legacy ruined in a day? Careful. Careful. Yeah, I see a little yeah, a little no. Say again. 
Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Remember him, guys? We talked about that today, man. Hezekiah. He was on a roll. He was going great. He was leading a nation of people. He was making good decisions. Bushwhacked, blindsided stuff's coming at him, right? Other nations, the Assyrians are coming to take him out, steal everything he's got. He just says a prayer. Uh, Father, can you deal with this? Yeah, no problem. Boom. The enemy's destroyed. Gets sick. He's going to die. Isaiah says, uh, sorry, get your house in order. It's over. You will not recover. That was the prophecy from Isaiah. Not only, you're going to die, you're not going to recover. It's kind of like this double deal, you know? You're going to die and you're going to die? Why do you have to say it twice? I mean, there was really something being pounded home there. And Hezekiah said, oh, man, shed a few tears. He said, God, don't you remember me? And God, God repented, if you will. He changed his mind. He said, all right, you got another 15 years. Go for it. And I believe the Lord was expecting, hoping, prodding, do great things. Another decade and a half, guys. Wow. But what happened? So he put himself and literally his comfort in front of the future of his next generation. He abandoned his sons so he could be comfortable. He rationalizes in his mind, as long as I have peace and security in my lifetime, it's okay. His legacy was forever changed. Forever changed, all right? Now, after we learned about Hezekiah, you guys had an assignment. The assignment was to ponder three questions. Number one, how do you want to be remembered? Number two, if today was your last day on earth, how would you be remembered? And number three, if how you want to be remembered and how you would be remembered are not aligned, what do you need to change so alignment comes so that those things are consistent? What did you find out? What did you find out? I've done this exercise a lot and thought about it a lot, but I hadn't really put the second question. If, it had, if I was gone today, how would I be remembered? And, and that put some, that kind of showed some gaps. <clears throat> and I think one of the gaps that showed up that I really want to work on was I need to be uh, more intentional about sharing God's love with other people so they can know. And, and there's a lot of my friends that don't. So that, that's, <clears throat> that's the big gap for me. It's just I got I to gotta share God's love a little bit more intentionally and openly with my friends. So uh, we, we, we talked about these questions and um, I actually came in here and um, I thought about if I die today, what it would really be like. And I realized that I've worked so hard for some things and I've tried to find so many things and find so much approval and all that stuff. But what I will be remembered for is just a few things, the guy that never forgave, the guy that was on American Idol, and the guy that was still bitter about his dad leaving him. So what I did today is I came in here and I wrote a song about forgiving because I have so much resentment in my heart that I don't want to live with anymore. Mm. My goodness. So, and when I die, for real, for real, when it's my time, I can say that if I die today now, that I've forgiven for the rest of eternity. And what I want people to know me as is the curse breaker. The curse breaker. Wow. wow. I, I have a request, and you might imagine what it would be. What do you think? Yeah. 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 Hey. I want it.
that you told me So many nights I wanted you to call So many nights I wanted you to know I care But I forgive you this time I'm not gonna be lost I'm not gonna be broken anymore It's all in the past now It's all done now Daddy, I forgive you this day I forgive you this day Daddy, I That it still doesn't hurt And I'm not saying that I'm over it right now But I'm telling you that I need not to be bound And daddy, I want to break this curse forever and right now And I speak to the child in you And I speak to the little boy that was broken in you And I say sorry, sorry, sorry Daddy, I forgive you For eternity It's over, it's done for eternity Forgive yourself now, Daddy. And I need you now more than ever. I want you now more than ever. I forgive you this day. That's it.